Welcome back, City Builders. Kodiak the Kodiak here. Since launch of City Skylines 2, we've gotten two new maps added to the game. That doesn't mean every map in the game is perfect for everyone. And it especially doesn't mean that it's right for every build style or give you the creative vision you need to build a perfect city. Now, as rich as the modding scene is for City Skylines 2, there is also an incredibly rich and diverse map making community that is already actively at work for City Skylines 2. So in today's video, I'm going to be going over 10 maps that I think are absolutely amazing and I think you should consider for your next city. In this video, we're gonna feature some maps that have some beautiful landscapes, as well as some maps that were created by some of your favorite content creators. Now, before we get started, make sure to subscribe, hit that like button, and don't forget to turn on notifications so you can keep up to date with all the City Skylines 2 news, tips, and tricks. Without further ado, let's get started. So before we dive into all these maps, I'm gonna let you guys know how this video is going to work. I'm essentially going to go through each map one by one. There's not gonna be really any glamor shots of any of these maps because when you're actively playing on them, you're not gonna really be looking at it in photo mode. You're gonna be looking at it with gameplay. So for the sake of time and for the sake of you actually seeing the map, how it will be played, I'm just going to be showing you guys the maps from my own perspective as I move through the map and go through all the details of it. All the maps will be linked down below and this video will be chaptered out. So if you see a map and you don't like it, feel free to skip to the next map. I do, however, really encourage you to at least watch the first map because I kind of explain my thought process a lot through explaining that first map. These maps are also not in any particular order. I will just have the video kind of in alphabetical order or in the order that they pop up in my game because there's some maps that are kind of out of alphabetical order. I'm not really too sure what's up with that. That being said, I also tried to avoid height map maps. So these are maps like one-to-one -one scale of Detroit or Chicago or things like that. I think a couple made it through, but I think that those maps specifically excelled in one way or another that were just above and beyond what all the other maps are. Also, if a map doesn't make my list, that doesn't necessarily mean it was a bad map. These are just the 10 maps that I felt like had enough variety and a good enough of what I think goes into making a really good map in the game, but to each their own. I've seen some maps from City Skylines 1 that I was like, ew, no thank you. And then I saw somebody take control of that map and turn it into one of the most beautiful screenshots I've ever seen in City Skylines 1 before. So again, just because a map didn't make my list doesn't mean it's bad. It doesn't even necessarily mean that I don't like it. I just don't feel like it fit with the rest of the maps that I'm including in this video. Another thing too, is that you should really make sure that you have map installer mod downloaded. I'll leave a link to that down in the description. Almost all of these maps I downloaded uh, into my game using map installer. For most maps, you have to manually go into your map folder and paste it in there or use a built-in map installer that comes with the maps. Otherwise, even the maps that say don't use map installer or don't use the thunderstore launcher still worked as long as I had map installer installed. So I think as long as you have map installer installed, you should be able to download all of these maps, no problem, but still read the description. And if you're still having trouble, even with map installer, try the manual download route. Cool, now that all of that is out of the way, let's jump into new game here and start taking a look at these new maps. As you can see, I have a lot of maps downloaded in my game. I download pretty much every single one that goes up onto Thunderstore and I take a brief look at it. These are maps that I think are really good reworks of vanilla maps or really good just general height map imports that they customize to fit different needs. Uh, I think these maps are just generally speaking, a map that you'll look at and be like, yeah, this is a good City Skylines map. Now, the first map we're gonna look at is actually the map that is currently up on screen right here. This is Allegheny Ridges. Beautiful ridges, valleys, rivers, streams, creeks, and floodplains of the eastern U.S. mountains. The Allegheny region is uh, kind of in Pennsylvania, Ohio area. So this map is meant to emulate the topography and landscape of that area. Now I do have two versions of Allegheny Ridges. I believe one I downloaded manually before Map Installer and Thunderstore kind of existed. And the other one I actually downloaded using Thunderstore. And I, I actually don't know which one's which. So we're gonna go over the first one. So if things are slightly different in your game, I can't imagine they'll be much different. There does appear to be a slight difference in the amount of uh, actual resources in the map, but I'm gonna just go with the first one and, and just, and just go from there. But uh, the default theme is North American. It will never get below freezing in this map, so you don't have to worry about snow. It's in the Northern Hemisphere. There's 55% buildable area and it has all outside connections except for water. Let's dive in to this one. So here we are in the map and this map has a lot of really cool stuff going for it. Since this is the first map, I would like to actually go over some things about different types of maps. So that way you guys know what you're looking at when you actually download your own maps yourself. 
So as I zoom out here, I'm actually using a mod that allows me to go outside of the general camera borders. This is designed for map makers, but I like to use it myself because I like to have a lot more freedom in how I actually move my camera around. Now, some of these maps are height map imports and some of the height map imports will actually have water on the edges. So it'll just kind of end here on the edges and then it'll just be water. Now this water doesn't function like normal water. It's not gonna flood into your map, but this is just a telltale sign that this map was probably a height map import because of how they actually import into the game. There's different ways you can import it, I guess, and some of times you will get them that will look like this, where it'll be water on the edge, and other height map imports will actually have a fully extended area. The thing is with the ones with the water, everything you see is viable. So this entire area is buildable. This isn't like the extended area. So if we ever get a mod that allows us to build outside the map area, just know that this map won't be super great for it because there's really no terrain outside of this area. That being said, I think the height map import is really nice. And one of the ways I can tell it's a height map import is based on the actual hills. If you look at the hills, you'll notice these like little wispy textures. Now you can manually make these little wispy textures sometimes uh, around in specific areas. But generally speaking, all of the height map maps have a lot of these little wispy sand trails that exist uh, when you import the map. You can also tell it if you find harsh uh, riverbeds as well. It looks like this map maker actually cleaned them up, which is really good, but a lot of Sometimes you'll just see like a harsh drop off. And if you see that, that usually means that it's a height map import. So something to know if you wanna know whether or not it's an actual real life place that they imported it from. So it does look like this was probably or is probably a real place that they maybe took and adapted. Maybe they added the rivers, maybe the rivers are natural. I'm not really too sure. But all I do know is that this map is really unique. If we take a look at the height map, you notice that the starting tile puts you up here. And I think this map is kind of built for more smaller settlements rather than some larger ones, but you totally could build something a lot bigger here. You could easily terraform out a lot of these areas. And as you can see by the river valleys, there is quite a few sediment plains here that clearly used to be like maybe old rivers or something like that. that are a lot flatter that you could build a lot more in. There's also uh, quite a few over on this side of the map. And as we zoom out here, you can kind of get a better view. Obviously we can't see more individual elevation lines, but generally speaking, these are kind of the flatter areas down over here. And so you could build a really large city down over here where the actual highway currently is. This map has quite an abundant amount of little hills that kind of spec the area, as well as access to some built in, as we can see over here, some built in wind turbines. Now, if we actually access the power lines, we'll notice that this power is actually already hooked up to the map itself. So if you're building on this map, know that this power line right here could easily just be connected straight up to your town and you immediately already have access to internal power. So if you're looking to build a big city, this southern part of the map, that's where I'm gonna dub I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this way is north and this way is south, but uh, this southern part of the map that's much more flat would be much better for building larger city or larger settlements down in here. But up in the mountains, it really leaves you the opportunity to be able to build smaller suburbs or some little pocket towns that maybe exist nestled in these valleys or little industrial areas. Is. especially up over here where this area kind of seems locked out you could easily include some roads that include some little side communities up over here i think this area is really awesome uh and just you know gives you some really good ideas and some structure in order to build around so now that we've looked at the terrain height let's actually go over here and look at the water deposits and as you can see we can see a lot of intentionally placed water deposits down in these valleys. Almost all of the groundwater deposits are placed in the valleys and they're they're placed pretty intentionally is what it looks like. I really appreciate that. I really like and give bonus points to maps that you know, intentionally go through with resources. We already have a mod in the workshop called Extract Anywhere by Pixelnot. This mod allows us to basically place our industry areas wherever we want. We'll never run out of resources. It, it's basically the unlimited ore and oil, but it also works for farmland and a bunch of other stuff. So the maps that just have like resources splattered everywhere, which is quite a few of them, did so intentionally so that way people could build whatever and wherever they want. And I think that's really good. But now that we have the mods that we have now, a lot of these maps that have just like unlimited resources everywhere don't really give players structure. And what do I mean by that? I think it's really important to have at least some elements of structure in your maps when you select them rather than complete freeform control. Because if you ever get th something like builder's block, for example, where you just don't know where to build next, or like you don't know what should go in a specific spot, or you wanna build this industry and you don't know where it should go, you can always look at the actual placement of the ore industry and just tell yourself, okay, I have to build it here, what do I do? It helps give your town a lot more character as well. 
With a lot of these groundwater deposits, it does make it feel a little bit more intentional when you actually look at a lot of these resources, and especially on some of these other maps, when they intentionally place resources in, let's say, the river valley. Because then you have to go, yes, I have to build my farming industry in this specific spot, or I have to build my geothermal power plant in this specific spot. And if you're lost on what to do or you don't know where to go from there, it helps give you that structure. So I really appreciate it when map makers do that. Sorry, that was a little bit of a rant about that, especially in just this map here. Not that this person didn't do that or that there's anything wrong with just like painting the resources down, but I just think it like adds so much to the maps when the map makers intentionally go through with their resources. That being said, let's actually move on to the resources. And this was actually why I had to re-record this video. I didn't say this yet, but this is the second time I've recorded this entire video because initially, when you go up here to the natural resources view, you'll notice that there's a lot of resources all over the map. And sometimes they overlay and go on top of one another. But if you go into the actual specialized industry, obviously that's how you can see the individual areas and if they're overlaid on top of one another. So I messed that up and now we are here. <laughs> we are able to like properly record the video. And so I wanna show you guys all of the individual resources on all these maps too, because I think it's really interesting how a lot of map makers place specifically like oil, for example, or the ore industries. A lot of these maps will include ore specifically in the mountain ranges. And I really like how this one did it because it blends down into the flat areas too. So you can really start off your ore industry down over here and let it kind of build up into the mountains if you want to. But as we can see, there is a lot of fertile soil and sediment in these old river valleys that don't have water in them anymore. Again, I absolutely love the intent behind this. And I think it helps bring maps a lot of character and a bit of realism as well. And then as we move into the lumber industry, obviously we can see the trees, but it seems like a lot of that is down over here. If we go into the stone mining and I guess ore mining and coal mining as well, you can see where a lot of these deposits are kind of built into the ridges of the hills here and built along large sections of the actual mountains themselves. There is a lot of coal mining activity in this region of the US as well and a lot of steel plants and, and other kinds of mines as well. So this is a resource rich area in real life as well. And you can tell that that's been translated into this map. And then as we look at the oil, we can also see that in some of these valleys where they maybe these were historic forests that, you know, obviously got covered up and that's how you make oils. So uh, it, it, we can see a lot of intent behind that too. And I, I really like that. I like how that when this river kind of comes down over here too, there's a lot more oil industries over here. So the final thing we're gonna look at on all these maps is the wind direction. Just so that way you guys know when you actually boot up these maps for the first time, before you actually start building, maybe understand which direction the wind's blowing. So obviously we had a lot of oil, oil, or oil deposits down over here. If we toggle that off and we go to this industry, will it let us, we have to jiggle it back, I think. Yep, there we go. We can see that there's a lot of oil industry down over here. And on top of that, if we go back to the wind view, the wind is blowing this direction as well. So the, just looking at all of this stuff can really help us start framing out our town when we first build on it. So over here, there's a bunch of oil, oil deposits. So like the wind's blowing up this direction as well. This could be a really good area for some potential industry up river. And as we go down river as well, we'll notice that the wind is really blowing out in all directions towards the edge of the map. So fi figuring out where the actual center of the wind is is really important because this area is probably going to be really good for building residential and probably you're gonna wanna stick to building your industrial areas further towards the edges of the map. Specifically, it looks like on this side because the, the actual central spot where all the wind, the low pressure point, where all the wind, or high pressure, I guess, where all the wind's kind of blowing away from um, will be down here blowing out in all these directions. So uh, wind's kind of blowing from this this way up and out. So keep that in mind as well. Anyways, I really like this Allegheny Ridges map. It has intentional flat areas where you could build something large if you wanted to and some smaller pocket communities as well. It's rich in resources, has access to immediate power. If we take a look at the map, it has some pre-built infrastructure here as well. This is a zonable road, so it's already intended for you to start building right off the rip. If we take a look at outside connections, this main road that comes into this cliff over here is the main road uh, to one of the exits of the map. This is not connected to these other ones. So before you connect to this area to this area, understand that you might get some dummy traffic that will try to come from here out to one of these two exits. We also have this highway on the south 
eastern southwestern side of the map that is just kind of all on its own so if you wanted to connect this area up you could buy down this way and build uh maybe a bigger interchange up through here because it looks like this road's downgraded so you could you know you could build it up and actually connect up to this interchange here and have a full highway network and then build off and around that I think there's a lot of options and there's a lot of ways you could take this map. Obviously, we have the rail line running through it as well. And there's actually shipping connections as well on this map, which kind of come out from here. It doesn't go all the way up the river. I think it stops right about here. But do keep that in mind as well. If you want to build a harbor, this area down over here would be perfect for it. Now that's about everything I'm going to show off in these maps, so let's move on to the next one. Next up is a map that actually has two different versions to it, and that's called Dolphin Bay. The description of the map is as is generally known, dolphins are the second most intelligent species, after mice of course. In their wisdom, they welcome us to their bay, dotted with islands, surrounded by fertile land and breathtaking mountain ranges. This map actually has all outside connections, including water pipes, which is really nice. It does also get below freezing though, so do keep in mind you will have to deal with snow for at least some part of the game. Now you might be wondering why there's two different versions of the map, and that's because one version of the map, the default version of the map, uses the Golden Gate Bridge asset. But if you don't have access to the Golden Gate Bridge because of your game version, you can actually use the Grand Bridge version, which just replaces the Golden Gate Bridge with the Grand Bridge. I'm unsure of whether or not the Grand Bridge can still be used on this map if you use the Grand Bridge version of the game, but uh, the bridge is going to be replaced. And we'll take a look at the Golden Gate Bridge version of the map, so then you can just kind of like replace it in your, your mind with the Grand Bridge version. So let's dive into it. Okay, so here we are in Dolphin Bay, and as you can tell, it is a, I think this is a rework of the River Delta map, as a lot of maps are, a lot of maps are reworks of the River Delta map. Uh, over here, we have a nice ridge line with the mountain. Over here appears to be an outside connection that kind of rolls down this hill. I really like these switchbacks, and I like the character that this kind of adds to this area. They also went through and put some retaining walls in, which I think is really nice. Again, I love the character of this switchback area. It's something I wanted to show off first and then we also have this melting like river almost that kind of comes down from the mountains into the bay which I think is really cool if we go back to the starting tile though this is where we start so we start here on this island it is super flat over here if we look at the terrain heights it's very flat they give us some on off ramps if we want to use them obviously we could rebuild a large section of this if we wanted to if we wanted to just knock out all of this we totally could or downgrade it or do whatever you really want to do but this is clearly the intended starting location you get access to rail right away from the starting um, plot, I guess. Uh, and you have direct access to the highway and a couple exits as well. You can go up this direction if you want to start building that way already too, which is really nice. The water and sewage also starts over here on the highway interchange, so do keep that in mind as well. As we zoom out on this map though, you'll notice that you have access to quite a bit of it. If we move out over here, there is an actual like hook peninsula that kind of comes down here and we can see where the Golden Gate Bridge is. So it wraps around this mountain, comes in, and then boom, we're on the Golden Gate Bridge. As we go through it, which is quite fun, and then we go through to the other side over here with another large hill, but not as, in, uh, I guess, obstructive of the road, which is pretty nice. We have a uh, nice little jagged rocks over here. And if we take a look at the height maps now, as we start to kind of come back in over here, we can notice that there's another area which we could call our starting tile if we really wanted to. It's perfectly set up to do it. So if that's something you could also do as well. This map has a lot of character. It feels like it has a lot going on and it feels almost bigger because of that than a lot of the other maps. We have quite a few outside connections and the infrastructure on this map is quite impressive. There's a lot of variety. There's already pre-made connections that gives you some kind of structure to build around, but at the same time, uh, you know, you could rebuild it if you really wanted to. There is really so much in terms of highway infrastructure through this map. We have a dead end out on this island where we could build over here if we wanted to. It's perfectly slated to have this kind of connect up over here if you really wanted as well. There's little pockets of flatness 
everywhere for you to build that's very intentional the rail looks pretty good as well there's not too much in terms of elevation change everywhere which is quite refreshing and there's this massive cloverleaf interchange up over here as well again i think this map has a lot of variety it has a lot of cool stuff going on there's lots of intentional places to build there's rail there's highways you can connect them all up you can rebuild it if you want to it has lots of islands where you can build your own unique style on each one and this really cool bridge out on the cove and here we can look at the whole map from up above there's just a lot going on it's a really cool map it has lots of variety you can build um like not necessarily pocket settlements but you can really build your city out in different sections really easily on this map and it already has a good setup for your infrastructure now that we've taken a look at the actual terrain of the map, let's take a look at the groundwater deposits and it's kind of just sprinkled about. Again, I don't know how much of this is different than the actual River Delta map. I assume it's quite different because I think that there's a lot more water on the River Delta map and I don't think that there was, um, you know, water deposits out over here, but you can tell that there is some pretty uh, scattered around ground water deposits just about everywhere it doesn't feel too intentional but at the same time it is varied enough where you could at least have some kind of structure with it as we look at the wind it i would assume is pretty similar to the other river delta maps the winds kind of blowing from like right over here and it's blowing out in all directions so it's kind of all blowing from this central little island area kind of like over here maybe in this tile and it blows out in all directions from there so just keep in mind that you need to be upwind from your industry now if we look at the resources it is really mixed and there's a lot going on so we're definitely gonna have to go into our specialized industry view to kind of take a look at everything pretty much every single flat section has a bit of farmland to it which allows you to build those farms in those flat rolling hills as we look at the stone mine or the uh or sections of the resource views you can tell that they're just kind of sprinkled in around the edge of pretty much any of the terrain changes mountains go up any kind of rolling hills start to appear you can probably guarantee that there'll probably be some kind of ore resource in that area and if we look at oil as well it seems to be scattered about in a lot of the flat areas really no rhyme or reason to any of it but it's speckled in and it helps give you some kind of structure which i do like Generally speaking, I really like this map. I think it has a lot of character to it. I think it has variety. And I think this map could build a really special city if you set your mind to it. Without further ado, let's move on to the next map. Now, the next map I actually have three versions of. Um, one of them was before Thunderstore I downloaded it. And the other two is that they're both from Thunderstore and there's actually two different variants of it. And that's Kexford. Now, I'm actually building a city on Kexford, which I included in the background of my city's Skylines 2 2024 wishlist video, which I will put up in the annotations right now. This was like probably the first high quality map that was uploaded to any of the modding platforms for that matter, uh, right off the beginning of the game's life. The moment people figured out where to upload mods, Kexford was uploaded, which is a fictional map made to suit most playstyles with varied outcomes and good distribution of resources. The place is based on the look and feel of the coast of Norway by Jax Rudd. So here's the deal with Kexford. It has the North American theme, but the cl base climate for the game, I'm not sure which map they used. It might've been Windy Fjords. I'm not too sure, but they're very clearly building it on one of the colder maps because it only gets to a maximum of 74 and a minimum of eight degrees Fahrenheit. This is super cold, well below freezing. This map will have a lot of snow on it through most of the year, which is obviously a problem for some people. So there's also Kexford Temperate, which never gets below 42 degrees Fahrenheit and has a lot of rain going on for it. Both maps otherwise are exactly the same as far as I understand it. They have all outside connections, including water pipes and a pretty good amount of resources. So let's dive on in and we are going to take a look at the non-temperate version of the map, the one that actually just comes with full seasons, um, just because there's really not too much of a difference between them. So here we are in Kexford again. Kexford was one of the first maps that was uploaded. So um, it, I'm still impressed by this map to this day. There's obviously a lot of flat areas, but they seem very intentional in how they were placed. So I immediately went for the uh, landscaping view of this map, but let me back out and just take a look at this actual map right here. If we take a look at the whole thing, we can see that there is a bunch of different islands that you can build on. It is very much like Archipelago Haven, which might even be the map that this is actually built from, 
but with much larger islands that have lots of intentional flat spaces for building. The map creator Jaxra took their time when it came to deciding where they think people should build on the map, and I like that it gives us a structure to kind of work around. They also put some fun little details in here, like placing down some of these mining trucks and excavators to make it look like they're starting work on a new highway interchange, which is really cool. I always love it when map creators take the time to actually go through and add little fun details to every map. Again, let's go back to the topography view and you can see that there is lots of flat pockets to build everywhere. Jack's Road was very intentional with where they thought would be good areas to potentially have cities and settlements. There's lots of on off ramps. If you wanted to change your starting tile, you totally could. They put intentional ramps to go up to different elevations where they thought necessary. And I just, I don't know. I just, I still am like just so at peace with this map. It is just... Uh, it's just got so much character to it and different variety and some pre-baked farm fields. If you wanted to put like a little farming area in here, it's already got some like roads drawn out for you. It's got this snaking river. It has islands. It has mountains. It has nestled little communities. It's just got, it's just got everything going for it. There's lots of tunnels that kind of go between. So we have this bridge that goes to this island and then they tunnel and then they go to the next mainland and then they're over here. And then it's just, oh gosh, I like this map a lot. <laughs> you can't tell. Do keep in mind though that you only have access to kind of like the edge of the map, obviously. So keep in mind how far you're building and how far you actually want to expand before you start. There is lots of highway connections going on the outside of the map. I believe there's three outside highway connections. There's one down over on this side of the coastline. There's one up over here on this side of the coastline. And then there's one up into the mountains on the north side. We also have a railway connection that obviously runs through. This starting tile has a pretty interesting interchange up near it as well. And as we move into the let's do wind first, do keep in mind that when you start building, this starting tile area is where the wind kind of like ends. So if you're gonna build your industrial area, it might make sense to build it more over here on this starting area rather than towards the direction that the road is going. If we look at the water deposits on this map, you can take a look that there is quite an abundance of them, but they seem pretty intentional. They put them in, inside of some of these little pockets or in like areas where there was maybe a lot more winter runoff from the mountains or in areas where there might be like a lake or a river delta that might have swelled up a lot of water. There's also just like general pockets every once in a while, but I really like the intent and I quite appreciate it. That being said, if we go into the specialized industry view and take a look at farmland, there is farmland pretty much everywhere where there's flat spots. You can see it up the river here where the uh, pre-built farmland is. There's a lot of fertile land resource everywhere, so you shouldn't be in sparse need of that. There's a lot of ore inside the mountain pockets, which seems like it would look pretty good from a building standpoint, as well as some flatter areas if you wanted to build something like a quarry. If we go into the oil resource now as well, there is quite a bit of oil along the actual coastline of the map if you wanted to build an oil extraction or up here in the mountain area there is also some oil up over there actually i think that is that the edge of the map that's actually past the edge of the map i take that back let's take a look at this again hold yeah over here so on this island and up in these hills over here you can notice that there is a little bit of oil but it's mostly centered in the coastline I really like Hexford. It's one of the oldest ones available on the workshop, and it is, I think, one of the most downloaded custom maps on the workshop for good reason. It's really good, and it has stood the test of time with an ever-changing modding landscape. Next up is one of the original created maps made by your favorite content creator, City Planner Plays, Magnolia County. There's no description of this map, but it does get below freezing. It has North American themed. It's in the Northern Hemisphere. It has all outside connections, and it has a pretty good amount of natural resources that feel intentionally placed. So let's dive into this one. Now, I believe this is the map that Phil is actually building his map Magnolia County on currently right now. And he based it, as far as I understand it, on the areas of the northern part of Michigan, the UP specifically, as well as the northern part of Wisconsin that he grew up in. This is a redo of the River Delta map, if you can't tell by the external area of the map as well. And it adds a lot more land to it, a lot less islands. Not that there isn't still one here. If we look at the terrain height, Phil was very intentional. He made a lot of these like finger 
like mountains. That's like the way I've kind of been describing it when I look at this map where he has a lot of these like little little finger valleys that kind of run down from the mountains here. And as you can see, they kind of snake in and around. Uh, this map is definitely tailored more towards a lower density of traffic kind of going through it. It is all two lane, two way roads. So uh, a high traffic density could be a problem on this map if you don't upgrade your infrastructure. That being said, there is a lot of intentional spaces that Phil went through and made super flat for you to build on. There is quite a number of different areas you could choose from. And the starting tile does have one flat area here and a couple others up over here. If you're looking to build maybe some like your industry or some services up over here that you can kind of keep separate. There's also a big flat area along this river as well. If you wanted to build a more long city over here or over here as well, which this area is quite flattest uh, on top of that too. Again, there was a lot of intent behind the planning and shaping of this map from Philip. And if we go and look at the water deposit you'll see the same thing. Phil actually took the lakes, added the groundwater deposits near them because that's where they would realistically kind of be at. The water table would be a little bit higher around these lakes. He also spaced a couple out as well in case he wanted to pull from uh, some of these other areas too, which is quite nice. Especially if you wanted to build like a town around some of these lakes or up over here, you could totally do that by just pulling water up. And again, as you can see, there is access to water and sewage uh, from the starting area right here. And if we look at the wind direction, I believe it's just exactly the same as the River Delta. It's all kind of coming from this section of the map and blowing out in every direction. So just keep in mind your wind direction. Now, if we go into natural resources, you can tell that Phil went absolutely crazy with <laughs> the farmland. And if we actually go in, to the individual specialized views and we take a look the farmland is incredibly rich in this valley this valley was very clearly a high sediment dumping area and there's a lot of rich fertile soil that has flown through this valley making this land great for farming if we look at the stone mining or ore mining area pretty much everywhere where there's a hill you can probably expect there to be some ore industry for you to build on including these little fingers valleys things that i don't know what to call um you know that you could build uh, an ore industry based around any of these ridges that have any kind of mountainous terrain and then if we look at the oil area this island is ripe for oil as well as this valley up over here and some pockets on this side of the map as well for this being one of the first custom made maps in City Skylines 2, I'm very impressed at what Phil was able to do. I think there is a lot of potential for this map, especially if you're looking to build uh, a really cool and unique geographical city, especially if you play into the little finger pockets that Phil has made over here and build along some of the intentionally flat sections. I think you could build a really cool and unique map on this. Next up is one of my favorite maps that I've seen so far. Like. I, I might actually say this is a top five map for me personally, and that's Meridian Gateway. The Meridian Gateway is a narrow sea passage between two continents. This once prospering area during the medieval ages is filled with resources and fertile land ripe for new settlements and expansion. Choose if you want to expand onto the surrounding islands and create tourism destinations the likes never seen before or build the most important harbor city with vast industry and cargo transportation. Good luck. Now this map doesn't get below freezing, but it is in the North American theme. It's in the Northern Hemisphere, 27% buildable area. It has all outside connections and has quite a bit of natural resources. I think this map looks absolutely fantastic. Please let's dive into it now. So here we are in the map. This is kind of like the thumbnail image that we saw previously. And if we zoom out, you can take a look at potentially why I like this map so much. If we look at this map, so first off, it's a height map. And the reason I know that is because of how the terrain looks. It's nice and squiggly. It's taking that natural height map data and importing into the game. So this is, is like almost guaranteed a real spot that they took a height map from. I am so interested to find out where they took this from. So if anybody knows if the map maker ever sees this video please tell me where you took this height map from because this is so cool i want to explore it on geo on on like google maps or something but there is a lot of fun little character in this map as you begin to explore around it there's this lake that flows down out to the coastline there's good pre-made infrastructure rail lines all sorts of stuff it's all definitely built 
to be a more low density area based on the actual highways that are built in It's two lane two way. So do keep that in mind is that if you want a more high dense area, you will probably have to upgrade this to a two I guess road highway long term if you really want to over on this side of the river as well there's another double connection of rail and uh road that kind of squiggles down into these dirt roads too so if you want to create bridges that connect up all of these islands or i guess all these islands this island to the two continents you could totally do that you could build a bridge across from here if you want to i don't know how the heights would work you might have to do some terraforming but there's lots of different ways to really connect up this side to this side and honestly each side looks super cool you have this big cliff that kind of dumps out into this peninsula over here you have this hill which obviously is emulating a volcano of some kind over on this island and then over here again you have this cool mountain lake and these big flat plains this map has a lot of variety has a lot of character and as we look at the height maps you can see that there is a very large flat intentional building area over here as well as just mostly around this entire side of the map this continent over here is so uh, ready and ripe for building. You can almost build like two cities where you have one over here and one over here where it's split by this little valley right here between these this hill and this mountain. And then we have this island over here, which again, you could turn into like a tourist hotspot if you wanted to. And then we have this other peninsula over here, which again has some like dirt roads that already kind of snake through it. I I just I love the little detail of this map. I I am I'm just every time I look at it, I'm just like, ah, gosh, I love it. As we look at the water deposits, they are a little sparse. So there is quite a few of them speckled around in certain spots of the map, but they're not very dense. They don't have a lot of water in them. I'm not sure if that's because this map needs more water to rain on it in order to fill those deposits up or if that's just intentional by the map maker. Not really too sure, but it is a little sparse, so do keep that in mind. There's quite a bit more as you move over to the other peninsula, but just keep in mind that this flatter area doesn't have as much in terms of those options. Now, if we look at wind direction on this map, it is a little different than some of the other maps. It does feel more like the wind is blowing from this coastline up and across. So if we think of this as north, it's blowing from north to south pretty much the entire way across, which I think is really cool. I like it when the wind blows from the coast onto land. It just feels right to me. <laughs> but um, anyways, if you're keeping that in mind, just make sure that like you place your industry further over here so it doesn't blow into your residential areas. Now, if we look at the resource map, there is quite a lot going on here. So we're going to have to go into the individualized specialized industries. You notice that there is a lot of fertile land, a lot of fertile land on this side and this side as well. Pretty much everywhere where there's flat or a valley, they put down fertile land. If we go and look at the ore resources, uh, pretty much exclusively nestled in the hills over here or over here, um, in the volcano as well, the mountains and this hilly region over here. There is a flat spot that has it if you wanted to do quarry too. Could be a really cool idea. And then if we look here, we can look at the oil amounts and there is a lot of oil in these flat areas as well as in this valley where that um, fertile land was too. So it gives you lots of options and you can pick between two different resource types for different areas. I really like this map. Um, I like the resources. I like the looks. I like the character. I really like this map. It's a top five map for me. Um, not that any of these are in any particular order, but I just, gosh, I just, I love this map. It makes me smile every time I look at it. Consider it, please consider it. You also get access to this island, which is super cool. Anywho, let's move on to the next map. Next up is North Harbor, a resource rich unincorporated area surrounded by a large natural harbor. It's a North American theme. It gets down to 23 degrees Fahrenheit, so you will have to deal with snow. It's in the Northern Hemisphere. It has 54% buildable area. There is no harbor connection though, even though it's called North Harbor, but you can easily draw one based on how it looks. Let's dive on in. So as you can see here, again, you could easily draw an outside harbor connection, but this is one of those height maps where there is no extra edge. So everything you can see is purchasable. It is buildable. It is definitely a height map import as well based on the way the ground texture looks over here. There's a lot of pre-made infrastructure on this map and it is again another one of those flatter maps which allows you to build very wide especially over here. I'm going to jump immediately into the height map view as we can see here there is quite a bit of flat land here which allows you to build a really large city in this area if you want to. Allows you to build that wide 
area. It allows you to build a very, very large city if you actually want it. A lot of these custom maps are built around hills and really confine you and force you into certain areas. So if you want to build to your heart's content and you want that full creative freedom without having to destroy the terrain, in theory, you could just knock out this hill and build this entire area into like one large city if you really wanted to, or you can just wrap it around however you want to do it. I like the variety in these maps that I've chose, and I think that this plays perfectly into that style of build. That being said, this map has a ton of character to it too. As we move up over here, there is a cool lake here as we get into the hill section of the map. A lot of the infrastructure on this map is built for a lower intensity traffic, except for the main highway that runs through it. So there is still a place for high intensity traffic and this lower uh, volume traffic road is really built in a way to just kind of get people out so it's more of an arterial road rather than the highway so the highway over here arterial and then you can build your collectors off of this pre-made infrastructure if you want to or you can knock it out yourself one of the really cool characteristic things you have on this map is this rail line as it comes through it curves off to the right and that's because there is a uh, rail line under construction. Uh oh. So if you want to destroy all this stuff, you can actually extend the rail line out fully, cross the river, and follow the trees that have been planted along here and finish the rail line connection that goes over to this side of the map. I remember reading the map description for this and this town died because of the highway that came through, pulled uh, people like over to here and there was not enough resources or something. I, I don't remember the lore behind this, but this is an abandoned town over here. So you can see the cemetery and some old mill runes, which are supposed to be like old abandoned houses, which I think is really cool. I think it adds a lot of character to this map too. Um, I, yeah, gosh, I like a lot of the, the character that's in this little area over here, especially as we go over here to this hill with this dirt road, which obviously isn't connected, but it zigzags up here and leads to this old castle ruins, which you could easily replace with any of the satellite dishes if you really wanted to. I think it would be a really fun, unique spot for something like that. It also has a great view from up over here of your city too. I think this map is laid out really, really nice. Again, it really flat over here where it doesn't have necessarily as much character, but there is tons of character if you really look it for it. As we move into the water deposits, we can take a look over here and notice that there isn't that many. There is some over here in the forestry areas, what I would probably call this spot over here. And as we look down over here, there's a couple more down over here by this rail line in this flat area, but that's kind of it outside of the lake, which you could just pull water from the lake at that point if you really wanted to. But that's kind of it in terms of groundwater. So just keep that in mind. As we move into the air direction, we can tell that it's all blowing kind of out towards the coast, but it's really spawning from up over here. So again, with every map, pay attention to the wind direction, but it does appear like the coastline is a pretty good spot to at least build your industry area or obviously the edge of any part of the map. As we move to the natural resources, all of this flat area has access to some farm fields. So if you want to build some farm fields, you totally have access to do that in anywhere that's flat. The ore industry is surprisingly sparse on this map. I did not expect it to be when I first looked at this map, but it is not as aggressive in the hills as I thought it would be. However, where that old abandoned town is, there is an abundance of ore up in the mountain near it. So you could turn that area into your new or industry like offloading warehouse area if you really wanted to. Then when we select oil, there really isn't that much. There's a couple little pockets here, here, and then on the other side of the river from the old abandoned town, there was an ore, the oil, I'm sorry, deposit over here if you wanted to build something out over here. And that's kind of it in terms of resources. I think this map is really good for somebody who wants to build a large, expansive city, but also still have some character and some spaces to take some really cool scenic screenshots of your city from afar. It's got enough resources to probably sustain it as well. And I think that this map has character while also being functional for those who want to build big. Next up is the map Three Sisters. This vast fertile plain traversed by the three rivers is an ideal location for thriving agricultural industry or spacious metropolis. It's a European theme. It never gets below freezing. It's in the Northern Hemisphere, 57% buildable area. There is no harbor or water pipe connection, so there's no water connection at all. 
and there is a pretty decent amount of natural resources. So here we are in our starting tile. I'm not sure again how good this start um, starting infrastructure will last you long term. But as we zoom out, we can see what the three sisters actually means. It is these three rivers as they converge together and dump out towards the ocean. Now, sadly, we're pretty far up river, so we don't really have access to the ocean or the harbor. So we don't really have as easy of access to things like boat connections but in theory you could i guess still draw a boat connection if you wanted to send the boat up river so it's not out of the question to do a harbor connection on this map if we take a look at the height map of this map you can tell that it's definitely got some elevation changes in these flat areas but you could build a huge city all over this delta in between these rivers is a fantastic spot to build a large sprawling city you might not even need to do any kind of terraforming if you want your city to roll naturally with the terrain or you could do flattening or sloping if you really want to this map has a pretty decent amount of infrastructure and pretty decent layout for it as well you have a whole highway that kind of just is kind of on its own on this side of the river over here that ends up becoming one of the main connections to come in and out of the city you also have the on off ramp from that connection that leads to the starting tile and then that road goes all the way down and exits we also from that entrance to the city we also have the power line as well as the rail connection which will then run up straight through the whole uh yes delta section of the map which you can pull off from to make your rail connection or your rail industry so you choose to go expansive with it this map could also be really good for an organic build obviously it's quite flat at the end of the day but you could still map the actual terrain changes with some smaller country roads and build a really cute farming industry uh with a more european theme along the delta itself there's also some little pockets inside the hills here, which kind of expand up. Like you do have access to this entire basin up over here if you wanted to build another town or community up on the other side of these hills. Now, if we take a look at groundwater deposits, there really isn't that much. There is clearly like some underground river that they tried to paint through here, but just keep in mind that it is a little sparse in terms of groundwater deposits. And if we move into the wind direction, you'll notice it is kind of blowing from uh, this side of the map over here with the uh, solo highway interchange and it blows kind of up and out. So keep in mind that the left or the west side of the map, if you were uh, counting the coast as the south, um, um, will be maybe the better spot to put some industry out over here on the other side of the mountains just because of the wind direction. Obviously, wind speeds are fast, so you could do a solar, or I'm sorry, solar wind industry here for power if you wanted to as well. Now, as we move into natural resources, it's pretty self explanatory. The delta here is where a lot or all of the fertile land is in this valley. And we have some pockets of ore up over here where the solo highway is, as well as on the other side where the wind is blowing too, as well as a couple pockets of oil resources as well. A pretty simple spacing of resources on this map. It's quite flat. You can do a lot with it. And I think it is quite pretty at the end of the day. It is really nestled here inside of some of these hills. And I think it would lead to a really nice backdrop to a city, especially one that has some nice quaint countrysides. Next up is a map that is quite new to Thunderstore. I think within the past 24 hours of me like recording this, like it came up, it is called Thunder River. And this map, I am very impressed by. It is a North American theme. It does get quite cold though, so do keep in mind that there will be snow on this map. It is in the Northern Hemisphere. It has 57% buildable area. There's no harbor connection, but you easily could add one. And there is no power import or water or sewage export as well. So keep that in mind too. So here we are in the Thunder River map. This map is a little stressful on your computer because of how many trees there are. So if your machine is kind of struggling to begin with, maybe cross this one off just because of how many trees are actually placed on it. But boy, does it sure look good. As we zoom out here, there is quite a lot of the map that's taken up by the water, which is why I said that it would easily be accessible for a harbor connection if you wanted to put one. But boy, this is sure a really cool coastline. This is a height map import, so you can build all the way to the edge of the map. Everything you see is totally buildable. And there is quite a lot going on in this map. If we take a look at the terrain heights here on this, 
there's a lot of elevation change. This map doesn't necessarily guide you or handhold you in where you actually want to build. If you want to look for something more organic, this could be a really good map for you. That being said, there's not not flat areas. You could easily build something pretty large and expansive over here on this coastline, as well as over here and in the middle of the river delta. You'd always flatten some areas too, and it does really appear like the coastlines are quite flat if that's where you're looking to build, or you could do some flattening yourself too if you really want to. There's also this big lake up here in the top right hand corner. So again, the lake is south, the northeast section of the map. There is a huge lake up here with an area that you could easily flatten if you wanted to build a little town up over here, but it does come with a pre-made dam. So the moment you kind of have access to this area of the map, you have access to all of the dam power, which is really cool. There is a pretty decent sized highway that runs through the whole map and it does split off as well and go in a different direction. So there's pretty good access to outside connections. You also have a rail route that kind of goes just north of the starting tile, so you can easily buy up to it as well. And if we go over here into groundwater deposits, there is a ton of groundwater, but it is all kind of in the starting area and it is in two huge pockets. Now, as we move into wind direction, it is all kind of blowing from the hills on the northwestern part of the map and it blows down and out. So keep that in mind as well. And it goes to the east fully too. So, uh, but one of the good things is that it is quite fast. So if you wanted to do some wind turbine industries, you totally could do that if you wanted to, but with the dam, you might not need it. Now, as we look at the natural resources, you begin to paint the picture of how they place them down. Pretty much everywhere where there's a river valley, sediment has dropped and there will be nice fertile land for you to build some farming industries. If we also look here, we have some ore industries pocketed up here in the mountains in specific uh, little valleys that you can mine from. And then there's a little bits of pockets of oil industry, which if we go into the specialized industries, we can get a better look at the oil industry right here. Not a lot, so just keep that in mind too. I think it's a really cool coastline. It's one of the main reasons why I wanted to include it. I don't think that the bridge is very intrusive. It's not far away. You can implement it really easily into the map. You could also lower it if you wanted to because it is quite high up. But there's a lot you can do with it. You can flatten the map and build a really large city that kind of expands out from this peninsula and over here. Or you can work with the terrain and build something more organic or that works along the coastline that's already been flattened for you. I think it has a lot of variety. It has a lot of structure, but allows you that creative freedom if you really want it. And I think that it's a winner. Now, while recording this, some new maps did come out, and one outstanding one that I want to include in this video is a map called Volcanic Archipelago. Welcome to Volcanic Archipelago, a handcrafted map. Now it's your job to make a new city in this new land. As a North American theme, it's 52 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, which means it will never dip below freezing. This will be a quite warm map, as a matter of fact. Northern Hemisphere, 20% buildable area, which is quite small, but it is an archipelago map, so it does kind of fit into the challenge of what kind of the map is. It does include an outside water connection. However, you, you could, in theory, I would assume, just like kind of break off a lot of the connections on this and kind of make this more of an isolated map if you really wanted to but it also has an abundance of natural resources especially farming and you'll see that when we dive into it so let's dive on in so here we are in the starting area for Volcanic Archipelago, and they give you a lot of tiles to start with so this map automatically starts you off with quite a few more new tiles now, obviously, City Skylines, when you zoom too far out, it really, really messes up the edges of stuff. But as, it, as we take a look at the map and the area, you'll notice that it is a pretty nice, spacious archipelago. It really does feel more like, I don't know, the City Skylines 1 archipelago maps that kind of are a little bit more spacious and spread out. And if we take a look at the height map view, there is a lot of buildable area on these islands. So this island especially is nice and flat and ready to be built on. Obviously, there is some like atoll like features on some of these maps and there is like an atoll kind of area over here as well as over here. And then we do have a couple like volcanic remnants kind of right here as well as right here. And if you wanted to say this is active or do something cool, you could potentially do that as well. But anyways, it does seem like there's some way to build on every single one of these islands, except for potentially the mountain island. But you could do a logging encampment on the uh, actual volcano island, not the mountain island. Sorry, but, um, you know, that is probably a good spot for some forestry industry as well as over here. But this is also the starting tile. This map does really give you a lot to go off of in terms of how you want to build it. Obviously, it's flat, so you can just kind of do whatever you want, but there is the actual shapes of the land masses on the island. And if you wanted to preserve that as some sort of like uh, 
in your head tourist area, you could potentially do that. Especially with the game giving you a lot of extra bonus starting tiles to give you this entire island to start, it really is a really nice start to this atoll map, which obviously you would probably expand over to this larger island long term or build an airport at. That being said, there is one outside connection that comes in from this map, and it is this main uh, road that kind of leads off over this direction to whatever this island is. But it, this connection and this path out to the outside connection does contain a train access. It contains power lines. There is water uh, pipes that run underneath the road, as well as the main highway that kind of goes in. So do keep that in mind that this is the only road outside connection when you start building on this map. None of these other islands have road connections, so keep in mind that all of your your vehicle traffic will just come from this one direction. Now, if we go into the info views and we take a look at the groundwater deposits, they do feel intentionally placed. They are quite abundant in specific areas. If you notice right here, the mountainous area that's kind of, or I guess hilly area that's on the starting tiles uh, is where most of your groundwater will be at. It'll be up in this mountainous ridge cavern area. And a lot of the other spaces have really, 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 really deep and uh, abundant groundwater. So if you want a more realistic, like, hey, I don't want to pull water from the actual surrounding tiles because that's probably ocean water and salt water you could pull from the groundwater if you really wanted to. Now on top of that, if we go to the resource view, you'll notice that it is quite yellow and there is an abundance of farmland. So we will have to go into the specialized industries in order to take a look at all of the resources. And as we can see right here, every single island, every single spot on this map is giving fertile land. So you can build your farming industries wherever you want to, regardless of what mods you're using. But if we go over to the ore industry, it gets a little bit more detailed. And as we can see, we can see that a lot of the hillier areas or areas with trees have some kind of abundant natural resource underneath it, like ore or coal or whatever you want to uh, actually place your industry uh, down in these areas. And then if we move over to oil, it's a little bit more spacious, uh, spacious isn't the right word, but uh, less abundant, I suppose, uh, than some of the uh, other resources. But that doesn't mean that it's not abundant in very specific areas. The area where you enter into the islands would be a fantastic place to put an oil industry if you want to do that. Now, finally, if we look at the wind direction on the map, we can kind of start to get an idea of where the wind spawner maybe is. It does appear like it's from this uh, smaller volcanic uh, island right here is kind of where the wind direction is mostly coming from. So it's all kind of blowing from right here and out in all of the other directions. So keep in mind that because this map doesn't have a lot of terrain and the wind spawner is right here, you want to keep that in mind when you're building your industrial areas. If you don't want too much pollution, keep in mind that all of the winds going to kind of set central around here and blow out. This is where the low pressure or high pressure, I guess, center is blowing out from. So keep that in mind. I think this map is actually a really fun challenge. It has nice flat areas. So when you go to build, you're not really uh, fighting with the terrain, but you are fighting with the coastline and you're, you're going to be fighting with running out of room on all of these islands and figuring out where to expand next. You can obviously create uh, land bridges or fully fill in specific areas if you want to, like if you want to extend out this bay and fill in this entire uh, bay cove here, you can totally do that. And I think long term, this map will be really cool once we get access to a lot more tropical and beach assets, especially with the beach content creator pack that will inevitably come out at some point whenever the asset importer and all that stuff is ready to uh, put new stuff into the game. But I digress. Once we kind of get that stuff, I can feel this map being a really cool archipelago tropical map that I feel like we have like another archipelago map, but it's not. This one feels tropical. It feels like it fits the vibe. And if that's something that you're looking for or looking into building, this might be the best choice for you right now. Our second to last map here is a map called Western Valley. Western Valley is a mix between North and South California. It's in the Northern Hemisphere. It does get snow, so keep that in mind. It has all outside connections and has 53% buildable area. Let's dive into this one. I believe this map is also quite new on the Thunderstore as well. And do keep in mind that this map does also have 100% buildable area. So like the edges of the map are the edge of the buildable area. So you can buy all of these tiles if you want to. As we look at the height map for this map, because it is quite flat, it's not as aggressive mountain wise as a lot of the other maps, which is why I wanted to include it. I don't feel like we have like a lot of non mountainy maps. So uh, even though I think the City Skylines 2 is really tailored to be um, a mountain heavy map game, this one doesn't have them. And so it's one of the reasons what drew me to include it to add some variety to this list. 
But this map is also really good. It's got nice rolling hills if you wanted to build something more organic with some flatter pockets if you wanted to build around that. We have a cool coastline over here with some nice shallow spots. It looks like there's almost like a sandbar here. I appreciate stuff like that. And we have a cool implementation of like a Stonehenge type, like type structure here, which is pretty cool. We have a good two road highway that kind of runs all the way through the map and a lot of pre-baked infrastructure as well. We have a good rail line that kind of runs all the way through the map as well as a two lane two way highway that also runs kind of along with the highway, but then splits off. As far as I can tell, there's no like direct connection to it though. There's no like interchange. So you actually don't have access to this highway off the beginning. So you'll have to build access onto it, which I think adds another element of challenge to this map. You start off in a pretty flat area though, but there's no like real, intended way for you to break off of this obviously this flat area is probably where they intend you to build or down over here but just keep that in mind as well when you play on this map there's also these hills just behind the starting tile and this large flat basin now if we take a look at the groundwater deposits they are really centered and focused along the river which i like i appreciate it there's also some underground rivers or some like flow from like water runoff that added to the ground uh and, and created these groundwater deposits that are over here which i really like and appreciate if we take a look now at the natural resources, you can tell that this is pretty much all sediment rich. Anywhere where there is a flat, low lying area that's not the mountains, you're going to have sediment that's going to be rich for growing. Before we dive fully into that map, if we take a look at the wind direction, it's all kind of coming from this area. So basically center your uh, industry with the logic that the wind is going to be coming from the coast here in this little cove and blowing up and out. Uh, also keep in mind that wind does change direction. So as it goes really fast right here, which could be good for wind turbines, it then cuts in and then follows this valley, which I think is really cool. I love the way the wind turns in this map. I think it's really cool and really sick. So just keep in mind that the wind has changed directions pretty frequently on this map. Now let's dive fully into the actual specialized industries. And as you can see here, there is a lot of fertile land in this valley. We have a lot of ore that is up here in the mountains as well. And then we have oil that's also speckled in specific spots in the actual flat areas. So you have a lot of variety. I like that this valley is very oil rich. Like you could make a big oil industry up over here or something like it helps give it like some kind of like intent, like, oh, wow, that's a lot of oil. I could totally build an oil industry up in here. And I think that's really cool. And I think it adds an element of uniqueness to this map. I also just generally really like how these hills look. They're very tree dense. I like that the, they used spruce to kind of speckle these trees. And then they really kind of just like go away as we reach the plains and the valley here. I really like how this is actually detailed. The core section of this map is not that aggressive in terrain and is really good for building something kind of wide if you're willing to work with what the terrain already has to offer you. There's good infrastructure and you could build something quite organic inside of this map and I think it's a good choice. I also really appreciate these tiny rivers that I see on a lot of these maps. And I guess I'll show this one off specifically, but they're really thin and like they snake through. And I think that they just look really nice. Obviously when you zoom out, they start to just look like sandbars because of how the game renders stuff when you zoom out. But gosh, I really like uh, these little tiny rivers and I, I like how they've made this whole river delta system. Now the final map we're gonna look at today is an actual one-to-one -one height map. I think it's a one-to-one, -one. I'm not actually too sure on that, but it is a real place that somebody has gone through and made, I think it looks absolutely fantastic. It might be my favorite map. It might be. I don't know. It's top five for sure, but it might be my favorite. And that's Wanaka, New Zealand. Welcome. You've been elected as Wanaka's new mayor. Congratulations on your victory. It is now your task to grow the town into a thriving city and keep the Kiwis happy. The map is by Rafterman NZ, who absolutely knocked this out of the park. There's a link to his YouTube right there. I'll put it down in the description. Why not? Because I love this map. It is in the North American theme. It does get below freezing, so keep that in mind. You will have snow. It's in the Northern Hemisphere. It says 0% buildable area, but that's not true. Uh, there is no water pipe connection, so just keep that in mind. But let's dive into this one because this map is stellar. Here we are in Wanaka, and we have a pre-built town that does emulate the real-life Wanaka. Um, if you go on to Google 
maps, you will see that as well. And as you can see, it is pre-portioned out some farm fields, just like a nice countryside. If you're looking to like not do the dirty work of building a countryside map, this basically has the framework for you. You can obviously customize it how you want to see fit, but this map is just ripe for the taking. I absolutely love it. I adore the details. I adore the little shapings. I adore all of the trees, the river. Obviously it's a it's a height map import, but like I think that they just did a lot of things right with building it. And I think it looks so good. They picked a place that fits so well with the default city skylines themes that already kind of exist. So as we zoom out here, we can take a look. This is a height map import, but they were able to get the outer edges. So it will have a really good and nice long view out into the plains there or up into the mountains. It'll have a nice backdrop for any kind of screenshots you're looking to take. And we have this cool cove up over here, which obviously has a harbor connection if we want it, but we can build all the way down to here and out over onto this part of the cove as well. Now let's go into the groundwater deposits and they do follow the river for the most part. There's a couple inland groundwater deposits, which I think is quite nice. So it has an abundance of groundwater if that's what you're looking to get out of the map. If we go into the actual wind direction, you can notice that it's actually blowing down from the mountains and out towards the coast in this direction. So if we look at, uh, the, I don't actually know what the real north and south is on this map, but if we're keeping with all the other ones, if the mountains are north and the coast is to the south, it is blowing to the south or southwest, depending on where you're at. It does blow to the southeast, but mostly just to the south. So just keep that in mind as well when you're building on this map. If we take a look at resources, there's a lot going on here. There's a a lot of overlaying resources and there's a lot of fertile ground in this river valley so if we take a look at the specialized industries in the farming areas there's a ton of fertile land so don't worry about building your farms inside of these little areas there's a lot of fertile land for you to do so if we go and look at the ore industry the ore industry does kind of start to encroach in on the river valley here and it also takes up part of these mountains as well so you can feel free to build your ore industries or quarries if you so choose then if we look at the oil industry that is just kind of randomly speckled about, it is very heavy on this coastline though. So this could be your oil coast if you really want it to be. I think this map is absolutely fantastic. I think it gives you that countryside feel without having to do too much work to create it. And it gives you that baseline so you can kind of start understanding how the maps like this kind of work to build, why they're fun, why they're so pretty. And oh gosh, I just think it looks so good. It does have a lot of trees. So just keep that in mind as well. If you build on this map that it could be a little performance heavy depending on where you're at. But I just think the map looks so great. It gives you pre-made infrastructure. Just keep in mind that there is not a lot of heavy, dense infrastructure. This is a very much a countryside map to start with. You could obviously build it out if you want to by slowly taking over each one of these little farm plots if you wanted to and build something organic around that. Each one could be its own little community or suburb or something like that. But it's just a really good template. I don't know, I, I really like this map. I hope you guys feel the same way. So those are what I think are my personal top 10 favorite maps currently available that aren't just like one-to-one -one height maps. If you guys feel the same, please let me know down in the comments. If you guys think I missed a map or you think another map could be really good, put it down in the comments. And I encourage you guys to go look down there at some of the other maps that are available for you down in the comments because not everyone likes the same things. I think I picked a pretty good variety of maps here, but I might've missed something and you might see something down in the comments that maybe came out after this video came out or just something that I excluded from the video for one reason or another that you might actually really like. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. If this is the first video of mine that you've seen, I do weekly recaps on Sundays every single week that recaps everything that's going on in the City Skylines 2 community, whether that be mods or the word of the week, which is back in action again. So we'll be covering that on this Sunday and every other piece of City Skylines 2 news. So make sure you guys are subscribed so you can keep up to date with everything. I want to thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. If you guys build something really cool on one of these maps due to my suggestions of them, please come into my Discord which you can find a link to down in the description and you guys can post pictures of your cities i'd love to look at them and love to learn what you guys learned about these maps and what you want to see in the future if i do another map video what did i miss what did you guys want to see please let me know down in the comments i want to thank you guys for watching i appreciate it and i'll catch you guys in the next one deuces